Hi there, this is Sandra from Retired and Seeing the World. Welcome to my channel. I am at the Pawnee Indian Village Museum. It's the first time hearing about the Pawnee tribe, so let's see what we can learn, okay? Erected by the state of Kansas, 1901, to mark the site of the Pawnee Republic, where Lieutenant Zebulon M. Pike caused the Spanish flag to be lowered and the flag of the United States to be raised, September 29, 1806. Beautiful place. Raising the flag. They've actually discovered it was lived in in the 1700s as well. They came back and rebuilt in the same area. And the floor that you're going to see in there is this third one from the top, that one right there. Okay. And so the painter, the artist, knew exactly where to put those in that top part of the painting because of the depressions outside. I don't know if you noticed them as you were coming up the walk, but every large depression outside is a home and every small depression is a storage pit. They have oh, storage okay. pits throughout their village as well as in their homes. And you'll see one in there. And if you have any questions, okay. we'll do it that way. And sure. We'll be glad to help you out. All right, so Cassie, you can turn on this monitor, and it's down here. Usually the buffalo hide is here, so you've got to kind of work your way around Man it. Chief, so it's like you just push that button Pony. on the tower, and then turn on the computer. There he is. And this will help you um, do a tour or get people started. A scapula on a tour bone by using this. from a buffalo. And, uh... Okay, so if you go to this summer dig. that goes to war. Bill, big Elk, Chief of the Skitty Wolf Pawnee. And this explains the paintings we just saw. Pause and read if you're interested. Let's go see what this museum's all about. So this is considered a mud lodge. The earth is beaten down hard and forms the floor. In the center, a circular place is dug about eight inches deep and three feet in diameter. This is the fireplace. The earth that is taken from it is spatted down around it and forms the hearth. Near the fireplace, a stake is firmly fixed in the earth in an inclined position and serves all the purpose of a crane. Here's a structural model of a Pawnee Earth Lodge. Remember the skiddy band of the Pawnee Nation. The Pawnees were in our great people. Once we lived on the prairies of what is now Nebraska and Kansas, then there were over 20,000 of us separated into four independent bands. Now we number around 2,500. By coming here, you will learn the story of my people 
and how we lived not so long ago. In these audio units, I am honored to tell you about our Pawnee culture and this village. Nama, Durahi Tirasi Hura Ramacharas Kuhai Iriratu Chukstapa Karikusha. Hello, it's good you came here. The Pawnee, the Wolf People. Kahaki or Republican. Changing cultures, a variety of people have lived in this area over many thousands of years. First were hunters and gatherers who traveled in small family groups. They survived by eating wild plants and animals. During the woodland period, 1000 AD, such developments as pottery making, the bow and arrow, and cultivating crops were introduced. A more dependable food supply allowed people to settle in permanent villages in the Central Plain phase, 1000 to 1500 AD, the Earth Lodge came into use. Historic times saw native tribes banding together in large villages. Tribes formed that are now recognized by names such as Pawnee, Wichita, Kanza, Osage, and Plains Apache. Spanish explorers brought the first taste of European culture to this area about 450 years ago. They were followed by French traders nearly two centuries later and Americans in the early 1800s. Indians in Kansas, a tribal map. So here we have the Cheyenne and Arapaho, Plains Apache, Comanche, Kiowa, and Kiowa Apache, Osage, Wichita, Kansas, or Kansa, Pawnee, and Oto. Pawnee Society. Pawnee society was based on a highly complex family structure. Most family relationships were traced through the female line. Therefore, contact was usually closer with the relatives of one's mother than with the father's relatives. After marrying, a man normally joined the household of his wife's family. However, he also maintained close ties with his own sisters. Interesting. Each village was led by a chief who was more or less under the influence of a higher chief of his band. The chiefs in turn was advised by councils of important men. The Pawnees were not united under a single tribal chief. Each band remained very independent of the others except for periodic cooperation in hunting or warfare. Bow, arrows, and quiver were traded by an Indian unknown tribe to the Moreland General Store in White Rock in the early 1870s. I think I did pretty good. Tomorrow we will kill buffalo. So, the question, is it a buffalo or a bison? What do you think? Bison is a scientific name for buffalo. The true buffalo is found in Africa and Asia. The American buffalo was named by English settlers by using a variation of the French words les and bouffs. Bison as a resource. They use, looks like they used every part of the bu- of the bison. Where did all the buffalo go? There are some sacks down here for cells. I go from 
we almost lost the bison. Within 20 years, the great buffalo herds were gone. Less than a thousand buffaloes survived, but they were saved and they're no longer on the endangered list. That's a good thing. And that beautiful painting named the Buffalo Trail. Albert Bierstadt in 1868. Look at those. Projectile points and knives of the Central Great Plains. The Pawnee Men. A Pawnee man was responsible for providing protection, leadership, and meat for the lodge in which he lived. He learned these duties as a boy often from one of his mother's brothers. He learned to hunt small animals and add something to the family's cooking pot. He learned to stand guard over the horse herd when enemies were nearby, and he learned to treat people properly according to their social rank or their degree of kinship to him. The Pawnee women. Most of the hard work was done by the Pawnee women. Among the most important responsibilities were the production, preservation, and preparation of food. Women used bone or metal hoes to plant and cultivate the scattered fields of corn, beans, squash, and pumpkins. This was dangerous work because enemy warriors often attacked them when they were beyond protection of the village. Women harvested the crops in the fall. These they dried in the sun and carefully packed in storage pits. They also dried and stored meat after their return from the seasonal buffalo hunts. Look at all the different types of Indian corn. Who knew there were so many different types of corn? Wonder if they tasted the same. That's what we're used to. Right down here. The Great Plains were not barren as early explorers described. The Native Americans considered the land sacred and abundant. The land provided native fruits and vegetables such as plums, grapes, and prairie turnips. Meat was obtained by hunting many birds and animals including bison, elk, antelope, duck, and quail. Fish, clams, and turtles were also available in the rivers and streams. Children's ways. Pawnee children were highly regarded. Elderly women, called grandmothers, whether related by birth or not, cared for the little ones. When younger, boys and girls played games together. When older, aunts and uncles taught, taught the children. Boys went to the pastures to work with the horses while girls were taught to garden and tend to the house. Boys played with bows and arrows, wrestled and went sledding and swam. Girls played with dolls and small figurines made of clay. Astronomers of the Plains Their way of life was based on the stars and the movement of the sun. The stars are responsible for the planning and the creation of the universe. They influence the weather, crops, the hunt, and many aspects of life. Look how beautiful.
they relied on the moon and the constellation. The map of the Native American nations. At one time, they completely covered our country. There's California. Even the upper northeast coast. You can pause and read if you're interested. The Republican Pawnees had a, had a mud village on the Republican Fork on the south side. Some of the men knew where the Indians had formerly cached their corn, and they dug it up. When the Pawnees returned to the village, we paid them for, for so much of the corn as we had taken. Men of men. Here's the list of the Pawnee enemies. Quite large, the Sioux, Cheyenne, Arpajo, Osage, Kansas, or Kansa, Kiowa, Comanche, Delaware, and Plains. And their allies were the Otoe, Missouri, Wichita, Arikara, and Omaha. Look at that. In 1800, they had 30,000 approximately. In the year 2000, it was down to 2,500. Pawnees today, by the end of the Civil War in 1865, the United States government was moving toward the policy of removing Native Americans from Kansas and Nebraska. The Pawnees resisted of this change as long as possible, but by 1876 they had given in to the pressure and had moved south. Moved south. They used the money to from the sale of their Nebraska lands to buy over 283,000 acres in present-day Pawnee County, Oklahoma. During the long move, 700 of the 2,500 Pawnees died. Nineteen oh three US Census of the Pawnee Nation. See what's out here. Just seems so um peaceful out here. Between the fireplace and the buffalo. There was a sacred spot that was invisible to the Wihara, the place where the wise words of those who have gone before us are resting. Lodge depressions. In front of you is a shallow depression that makes the site of another earth lodge. So you can kind of see the little indentation in the ground. So I can... I don't know if you can tell on the camera. When, the, when such lodges were built, the floor area was first excavated for a depth of one or two feet. The walls and roof were, there, were then erected over it. Later, 
when the roof um, collapsed from decay or fire, it fell onto the floor. You kind of see a little bit of the indentation. Site investigations indicates that lodges in this village were grouped around several small open plazas. These may have contained corrals for the horses, or they may have been clear spaces where the women cleaned hides and prepared food for storage. Occasionally, people fell into abandoned but not yet filled storage or cache pits. There you go. Numerous small shallow depressions such as the one behind this marker indicate the location of storage or cache pits. These pits were almost always bell-shaped, one or three feet in diameter at the top and widening to six feet for more at the bottom. The pit opening was covered with dirt, skins, grass, and wood, not only to protect the contents from the weather and animals, but also to hide the location. Some men chose not to marry and were referred to as the boys. They had little interest in social status or in having a well-appointed home. They preferred to go hunting or on the warpath and frequently took on dangerous assignments. This lodge behind this marker was probably the home of a less wealthy family or a group of unmarried men. It was one of the smaller dwellings in the village. A fired area in the center indicates the position of the fire pit, which was laid on the floor rather than in the usual pit. An interesting artifact found in this house was a small, well-detailed pottery figure. Stay on the trail, stay on the trail. It's another marker. Mats made of rushes are spread down around the fire on which they sit. There's the picture. This lodge was unusual in that it had two fire pits and no storage pit. A woven grass mat was found on the floor. Other materials found included bits of twined basketry, red and yellow pigments, and two piles of shelled corn. The Pawnee that lived here with other plain tribes, especially the Kansa and Osage. At one time, a chest-high wall built of sod and timber surrounded a major portion of the village. Remains of the wall can be seen here as a low ridge extending from this marker to the iron fence. Much of this wall has been destroyed. The hilltop location and the tightly grouped lodges provided them with protection. Fields, pasture, and a gaming area lay at some distance from the village. The fields were small patches of crop land scattered for a mile or more along the riverbank. Very likely an important person lived in this lodge because it had eight center posts instead of the usual six and was larger. A bison skull and evidence of a wooden altar was found. On the floor were pieces of a glass bottle. And that was about right here. In this lodge, two bone hoes were found in the storage pit. Pawnee women provided food by gardening, built the lodges and teepees, and raised the children. This lodge was one of the most interesting in construction details and artifact recovered. There was a raised ledge encircling the lodge floor, giving the effect of a sunken room. The Pawnee traded with other tribes, the Spanish, the French, and later the Americans. 
artifacts recovered from this lodge included two small pottery jars, stone pipes, and trade goods, including musket balls, numerous parts from a flintlock gun, and an iron kettle containing an ear of corn. There was also arrow making tools. That's what it looked like. And there's the artifacts that was found. Very interesting little museum. Didn't take very long to walk through it. Look at this view that the Pawnee tribe had. I hope you liked the video and thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it through all the way to the end. Maybe you'll give me a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it and leave me a comment below letting me know what you liked and what you want to see more of. Maybe you'll even subscribe to my channel so you can see and follow along on my next adventures and what I've been up to since I've been retired and seeing the world. See you in the next video. Bye.